1991 WCW. Mm -hmm. You helped form, in my mind, the most vastly underrated group in the history of wrestling, the Dangerous Alliance. Yourself, Paul E., Rick Rude, Arn Anderson, Steve Austin, Bobby Eaton, Larry Zbysko. I mean, my goodness, like the array of talent in one group. Just, I don't know. It just, I'm an old school fan. So it just, it blows me away. So, but for some reason, I, I'll never understand the credit. The group doesn't get the credit it deserves. So, why is that? Why is that? Okay. So, we'll back up. I mean, it was pre a lot of the, you know, oof time. Well, it was before the incident of the title trash, because anything after the title trash that birthed from that point, I basically, made everybody <laughs> i have to say that for all the clickbaits out there because that's what they'll run with medusa says she made everybody at wcw so um i have fun with those guys anyway so um i yeah i'm changing the trajectory of women's wrestling i was very disappointed now i wasn't under contract with wwe at the time so and i had the title they never even asked for it back they just Decided to get, you know, rid of me and the stories in the book, guys. So, <laughs> so well, why, why, right after Japan coming back, why, why, why wouldn't I do that to make a statement? You know, I mean, I don't know, but let's go back to the Dangerous Alliance. So, Dangerous Alliance, Paul will tell you this day that it is one of his. Uh, favorite factions besides the one he's in now mm. he said it is what it. yeah he just said that out there somewhere if you guys go back uh, some, he said something to that effect and uh him and i were talking about that and i said you know wouldn't it be something if you had something like that today you know they always joke about the women and the four horse women Mm -hmm. What about the new DA or, you know, something like that? Um, I, I uh, The Dangerous Alliance was one of the best times of my career in WCW because Paul gave me every opportunity and believed in me and gave me the microphone, gave me and put me in front of that TV. And he wrestled me and he just, he believed in me. He's seen a lot in me. It, Paul, basically, he helped facilitate and hone me and my craft and just yeah he did so, so when you came into wcw I, I guess was it paul was he the one that you know pitched this group to you i, I guess think he did pitch it to dusty he okay. did i think oh you know what that whole story is in my book i will order the book i will order the book I, i'm just uh, saying but yeah, yeah, I yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what's I'm trying to remember that line in there. I think I think it was him and Dusty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me let me piggyback off this question for a second because you you bring up a good point, and I think this gets talked about a lot in the wrestling world. Why do you think that in the current product, maybe it's the 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 W or the the pro wrestling fans. Or maybe it's a little bit of both. But why do you think everybody's so determined to recreate like the 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 four horsemen or the four horsewomen or the next NWO or reforming the NWO or uh, the Dangerous Alliance or any of the why? I mean, they were such uh, uh, great factions for their time. But do you think that people are still like stuck in the past because they can't believe that there's, you know, you look at the bloodline right now in WWE. They, they've done a great job at building that up to be special. And it, it and, took and years. It, it I took, took years uh, to build Roman. So, so what's your thoughts? Rome on wasn't built in a day. Yes. What, uh, of these recreate of people wanting, because you even hear in AEW, like they talked about the the potential four horsemen, the new four horsemen and stuff. I just don't know if, if you could. I always said this on our show. I don't know if there are four people right now that are in wrestling that could recreate the four horsemen to do it in a way that is so uh, that's honoring them still and. Uh, makes it special. It almost feels like you're watering down something that was so great. I don't think you can ever recreate. You can always reenact, but you, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can recreate. That's good. Right? Yeah. You always good. can reenact, but not recreate. And especially when the, 
you you can you can create soup by ingredient but you can't you know what i mean so yeah i believe that those are moments that will always be that that how do you say that moment that time of mm. grace that that will never uh that will not that will never get back but those are the the good memories of those intermittent times mm. that are so you know people go back and amazingly just they they relish in or they want to go back and just relive that and you know it's kind of like music going back to the 80s my time going back to live in the 80s the big hair rock and roll time and you know and um and them trying to come back and redo their bands and stuff like that you go back and you relive it and you feel good mm -hmm. and it's kind of like having you know the four horsemen come back and we're they don't they can't bump like they used to they can't run the ropes like they can i don't know if i want to see all of that i want to mm -hmm. remember them the way they were so at good. that time at the pinnacle of their career and same with the da now I believe the DA, the, the DA needs to go into the Hall of Fame. Agreed. I mean, yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? I mean, Paul's not there yet. Paul will be in there, no problem. But, I mean, Bobby Eaton needs, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. That's, you know what I mean? And, and the DA, yeah. I'm hands down. We're all Hall of Famers already except Paul. Let's start the Bobby. hashtag. Let's yeah. Start the hashtag. DA for Hall of Fame. That